Hi folks, welcome to another episode of NYC CNC. Right now I'm actually in the middle of my video series on making the dies to make copper jackets for bullets, uh, but a job came in and I gotta pay the bills and it occurred to me that maybe you guys wanna see a video on this. It's a quick job, nothing too sexy here. I've got four pieces of quarter inch cold roll that I need to make into a set of legs. We're gonna do just some quick hole layout, punch some holes through them and then bend them. So let me know if this is stuff you guys wanna see more of. Like I said, it's a little bit more of the day-to-day, -day less sexy stuff, but uh, get, drop a line in the comments below if this is something you guys like or whether it's more of a pass. Uh, so let's take a quick look here at the CAD model. As you can see, there are just three holes in it. The layout on the top two is spaced down a quarter inch and centered, and then another 750 between the two holes. And the layout on the bottom one is a half inch in and a half inch over. And the bends are pretty straightforward. It's obviously a 90 total. It's a 60 on the steeper one and a 30 on the less steep one. Nothing too precise required here. But let's, uh, so let's go ahead, do our hole layout using our height gauge. And then we'll mark our holes. We'll use our optical center punch. I love this thing to mark the locations. We'll hop over to the Whitney hydraulic punch, punch a few holes, and then we'll hop over on the press brake. Let's raise our height up to half an inch here. I like using a right angle plate just to keep the part square. So let's mark center line. Okay, now let's come in a quarter inch and mark the first hole. Again, probably don't need to be that precise with uh, any of this, nor will the holes transfer through that precisely. Now there was a 750 between them, so we'll come up to an inch here to mark the next. Okay. If I really wanted to be precise, I could get a, another uh, block that would let me ensure this was perpendicular to the granite plate. Now we'll use our optical center punch. If you haven't used one of these, there's uh, a glass magnification tube with a dot on it. We'll look through that. We'll put the dot right on our crosshairs that we just made with our height gauge, swap out for the punch tube, and like so. These can be a really accurate way of transferring or excuse me, of marking hole locations. Okay, now let's head over to the punch. Okay, next step is to carefully wheel the Whitney out. Like so, and we'll get her plugged in here. Okay, turn on our punch, find our first hole. Okay, we've got all 12 holes punched through, and let me tell you, as a guy who used to drill a lot of holes in steel, 
I love this thing. Let's head over to the brake. I took some dicum and then scribed the bend line. I like to use dicum here because I like to really see a distinct line. My brake here isn't necessarily the best thing in the world. Anyways, we're going to use a protractor here and uh, just eyeball the 60 and 30 degree angles. Shouldn't be too tricky and this doesn't need to be too, too crazy precise. Um, so let's dig in. We bent the first two, but uh, I wasn't happy with the camera footage. My elbow was in the way too much. So we'll record the footage here on these next two. Uh, so we're going for a 60 degree angle. So what I normally do, I'll take the time to measure. I'll, I'll incrementally bend it and measure it with the protractor. Now what I'll do though, is I will just line up my next part here. Actually, I gotta get my safety glasses on. And then what I'll do is use the other part as a guide. Take a look and see. Yep, that'll do. Okay, same thing for the other end. The scribe line uh, in the bodicum helps you keep it square, which is the other thing you have to be careful with with a little homemade brake setup like this is bending at it, inadvertently bending it at an angle. Quick way to make quick way to make scrap pieces. Okay. Okay. And last one. It's actually funny, the uh, lights I use for filming uh, are far better than the normal overhead lights. It makes seeing that line even easier. I, li I like this. I guess I'm glad I'm filming this for you guys. You can usually just feel it when they come together and you go a little hair past it to account for the spring back. So let's hop back, hop back over to the bench and see how we did. Okay, so here are our four parts. Let's take a look at how we did on the angles. Okay, so that's about two degrees shy of 60. I'm totally fine with that for this job. Not a problem at all. Just grab one more and see how that one did. I'm guessing it should be pretty similar. Yeah, maybe two and a half. I will right, try one more. Yeah, no, that's probably four. So um, within five, four or five degrees, okay. Not great, but not bad. Um, I happen to know the application here. That won't be a problem. Um, we did mess up the uh, 30 degree one, and I knew this after I did the first one. We went to between 37 and 40 on most of them. Now, I didn't end up correcting that after the first one for two reasons, or for one reason, which is that I happen to know in this application, the parts, um, the parts, it go like so and these two pieces here face the ground so having a little bit of a flare up there is actually a, a totally fine for this application um, so I didn't mind that this one was over bent just a hair uh, so that's it for this one folks I'll be back hopefully tomorrow with more on part five of the copper jacket series otherwise that's all I got take care folks